Welcome folks to this fantastic episode. Today we're going to talk about something amazing that is lake metabolism. Have you ever considered that all creatures on this earth, including yourself, must breathe to remain alive? This respiration is the result of life-sustaining chemical reactions in your body, which is called metabolism. Very briefly explained, metabolism breaks down organic matter, which is your food, to produce energy and different compounds which are necessary for your body to function correctly. Now, just as we breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide, so do many other organisms, whether it's your cat, your dog, your fish, or even microscopic organisms that live on the earth or in water. Lakes are also full of all kinds of creatures that breathe. You have loads of microorganisms such as bacteria that decompose organic matter. This process is called respiration because just like us, they use oxygen and produce CO2. And this CO2, carbon dioxide, is eventually released from the lake to the atmosphere. Now let's do a small fun experiment to see how lake metabolism produces CO2 and releases it to the atmosphere. Are you ready? Come with me to my laboratory then. Okay, folks, here we're about to start a mind-blowing experiment. You have here three bottles, each filled with hot water, warm water. Each of these bottles represents a lake. Now, all of these three lakes are inhabited by microscopic organisms such as bacteria. The organism that we're using is yeast. It's the same yeast that you use to make bread. Now the difference between these three lakes is that they have a different amount of organic carbon. In a lake, organic carbon is all these organic compounds usually originating from plants or animals or any organic compound. We're using sugar, which is an organic compound. The difference here is that this lake doesn't have any organic carbon whereas this one has one teaspoon and this one has three teaspoons now we're gonna fix a balloon at the tip of each of these bottles so that we will be able to see the amount of gas remember which gas CO2, carbon dioxide. How much of carbon dioxide is emitted by each of these lakes? Patience, my friend, you have to wait at least two hours. See you in a while. Wow, man, this is crazy. What do we have here? Look at that. Here are our three lakes. This was the lake without any organic carbon. It hasn't produced any gas whatsoever. Now look at this lake was the one with a little bit of organic carbon and it has produced a little bit of CO2. But the winner is this lake 
which had the most of organic carbon and it has produced the most of carbon dioxide CO2. What does it mean? It means that lakes with higher concentrations of organic carbon are likely to emit larger quantities of CO2 to the atmosphere. This balloon, my friend, is full of carbon dioxide. This gas is the main cause of global warming around the globe. Now, if such a small bottle was able to fill up a balloon with CO2, what would it be like for an entire lake? And what would it be like for the entire lakes of the entire globe? This is a lot of CO2 that ends up in the atmosphere. This is why, my friends, lakes play a crucial role in the global carbon cycle. In reality, things are much more complicated in a lake than in a bottle. Here we are at the shores of Lake Neuchâtel in Switzerland. In this lake, just like in any other lake, you have a lot of aquatic plants and microscopic algae, which are called phytoplanktons. These organisms do photosynthesis. That means they use the energy of the sun and CO2 to produce oxygen. In simple words, they do pretty much the opposite as respiration. So when we talk about lake metabolism, we're actually talking about the balance between respiration and photosynthesis. Understanding lake metabolism tells us a lot about the biochemical properties of a lake and it tells us about the role of the lakes in emitting CO2 to the atmosphere. Hence, we get a better understanding about the role of lakes in the global carbon cycle. That's it for today, folks. See you next time.